at you Wednesday, 28 August. This is the last week of August, last days of summer. Pretty astounding, the summer just flew by. Um, not a lot going on overnight. Equities kind of just locked in this big 28, 10, 29, 40 range. The calendar looks pretty weak today. We got some import prices from Germany. Nobody cares. We do have that ten-year bond auction in Germany. I will, I will be watching that out of curiosity. See how many people want boons at uh, minus sixty. Where are my boondy friends? Where are you, Bobby? Minus 69 and a half basis points. Wow. And then, of course, we have oil inventories today. That's somewhat interesting because oil had a bit of a ripper last night. Uh, but we're not really expecting much to happen today. We're basically end of summer. And then we're into the month end flow period here. So it really kind of starts today, tomorrow, Friday, um, there's month end. A lot of talk about rebalancing. If you look at the uh, bond charts, let's go ahead and take the 10 year on the monthly. See that thing ripped higher. Obviously, uh, ES, uh, 100 handles lower. Nothing, nothing crazy yet, 3%. But as this gets lower, there's that rebalancing question uh, that a lot of people are talking about. That could be in play. Uh, where we are currency-wise, for me, uh, looks like we could have um, dollar sale by commodity currencies, um, by sterling. Here's sterling. Sterling on the month there should be a positive uh, sterling at month end here on some more rebalancing. Very, very tricky month end. I'm not great at trading month end flows. I, I historically kind of avoid it unless it's incredibly obvious or I fade uh, outsize moved moves at month end. Um, we're more famous here for having a big fat lunch uh, at month end. Historically, uh, when we were in the institutional world, we just closed the books uh, at noon and we would go have lunch, talk about things and the business and markets. So I'm really not your go-to source for month-end action, but I can tell you that um, this will be interesting uh, this month-end because we've had a lot of outsized moved, especially uh, in fixed income and in sterling. Anyway, back to today. Let's uh, throw the four hourly charts up. Not a whole lot happening. This cable, um, something we've been talking about, we talked about yesterday on Twitter, Core Long Sterling Swiss. Here's the chart. You see what we're talking about. Looks like we've turned here. You can use this, uh, you can use this line of support now if you like, uh, if you're looking for a place to protect your risk. Here's what the dailies look like. It would be really ideal if we could kind of clear this uh, 121.35. But I think this is just a slow burn higher um, up to 130 eventually. A lot of ways you can play this. Uh, we're not going to get too cute with it. We're either long sterling Swiss or short euro sterling uh, tactically pretty much every day now. Uh, we do re recognize that, just like yesterday, uh, there are 50 or 60 point retraces in this all the time because it's very, it's very tenuous. It doesn't make any sense. Any kind of bad news in sterling and it rips the other way. Um, but this is something that we like in sort of the medium term, next 10 days, and certainly over month end, uh, sterling strength and. For those of you uh, who don't want to trade sterling Swiss, 
because you don't live in Switzerland or you're not used to Swiss francs, Euro sterling is basically the same trade. Let's go to Euro, very, very quiet. Um, pushing and pulling here, lots of bad news. Growth out of Germany was negative yesterday. We all know this, Germany's in big trouble. The fiscal question is out there, but we're just dicking around at the bottom here. There's no trade in Euro at the moment. We cleared out um, some of the weak shorts with that move up to 64. And now here we are at 85 uh, with a seven or nine point range overnight. So not much to say. You just have to keep your eye on these uh, year lows, 110.27. And on the top side, I don't really know what to do. I guess this will be a pivot now, 64. Um, I don't know what's going to drive it. We got preliminary GDP out of the U.S. tomorrow. That could be interesting, um, but I don't know. This is uh, so end of summer, heading into Labor Day weekend, and month-end flows are going to dominate. I'd just keep it light uh, if I were you, and, and that's the way we're going to approach this. Let's go back to uh, dollar CAD here. We talked about this level yesterday. Uh, 133.40 looked far away yesterday looks less far today I don't know what's going to drive this uh, oil's way higher so there's no real correlation with that uh, but just technically it's, an, it's a level you can't ignore Bank of Canada next week uh, so not much to do there we do have GDP in Canada on Friday that could be a bit of a bruiser and a mover uh, but this is a level you need to keep in mind, 133, 40, 45. Aussie, bad data, keeps slipping down. Uh, we're just patiently watching this. We'll start getting involved if we can clear these highs now, which is basically 167.86, 168 the figure, and 68.10, not 168. It's basically 6790 68 the figure and, and really most importantly 6820 uh, there's no trade here I'm just reminding people to be patient keep your powder dry and wait for these levels um, this is kind of the way to roll in this kind of market Kiwi punished last night really looks negative Kiwi but this could snap and turn at any point now we've had such a humdinger 500 points it's basically 10 percent uh, since July this for me the main th the main thing this chart here is is global risk off um, Kiwi has historically been the canary in the coal mine globally along with Aussie uh, you see all the big boys trying to smash this stuff preempting global slowdown, global recession. We all know the, the story right now. There's like a thousand little indicators saying this thing is going to blow up. Uh, will it? Don't know yet. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, but this chart here is a feather in the risk-off camp. That looks like crap, doesn't it? Wow. Uh, no trade here, just pulling it up, showing everybody. Uh, looks pretty bad. Looks pretty bad. Let's go to dollar yen. Not much to say here. A lot of options action around 106. Uh, we're just kind of in the middle of nowhere now. It, it, it's slightly interesting that we printed this, uh, you know, 104, 44 low if you ignore the sort of flash crash low this is this is a super important low from from March the flash crash was below there I think I think we traded 104.10 um, but it was so thin it's not really tradable but this is either like crazy town double bottom or this next attack through this low um, is going to be very important and this will just be risk generated probably a Trump tweet or a tr tweet from China or or um, probably something like that I mean this is the this is the impetus for all risk on risk off is the dialogue between the two monkeys uh, Trump and 
and Z, G. Um, not much else to say, really. I mean, looks kind of uh, messy mid-range. Let me just throw this crude chart up. I didn't actually see why we're up here uh, on my news feeds. Um, but we've got crude inventories today. A lot of people looking left-hand side. We've been fading this, uh, you know, fading high ones sort of the past month. And we will continue to do so, but this now looks like it can attack this 57.20, 57.50 area. If it does, we will fade up there again. Um, but this kind of gap, which surely uh, is news-driven, needs to be respected for now. And you need to recognize that you have inventories today, so keep it light for today. And for us, the fade now, we have to wait and just be patient. Uh, which is the theme with a lot of what's going on here. Um, 57.50 looks like the sell point. Let me just check ES for you guys. 65.78 overnight. Not much going on. You see this is our range. Is it contracting? Which side is going to go? Uh, don't know biases to the downside, but you just have to be quick uh, on the news, right? So if the trade war ends, this thing will shoot up to 29.83,000. <clears> if um, China becomes the enemy or Trump uh, becomes a stubborn donkey uh, in the Chinese mind, uh, this smashes through this 28.20 and then 28.05 is the 200 day. So this is what we're watching. Um, if you have core short, you need to trade this. Um, you just can't own it because it's too, it's too hysterical, right? It's not clear um, what's driving this. Well, what is driving this are people just talking, and so that's not reliable. Um, it's not a super reliable indicator. So you need, if you are core short, uh, I would suggest trading this for an average. Um, and if you're square like we are at the moment, just be nimble and be ready. Follow the news feeds. Anyway, I've said enough. Uh, looks like it's going to be a quiet day today. We're going to take a, a much stronger look at things at the fix today uh, just to see what's going on. But certainly in Europe this morning, it looks, gonna be, looks to be very, very quiet. Wish you guys good luck trading. Make some dough. Go ahead. I dare you. Uh, and we will uh, chat again tomorrow. Ciao.